it was such a buzz, especially on the east side, which is where we were from, um, around 1990, we started hearing that west side people knew who we were, and, you know, all around Metro Atlanta, people started to kind of know who we were. And um, that's, a, that's a weird thing, you know, when you're not really celebrity per se on some outcast, really mob level, or real celebrity. Um, but when you like a local celebrity, for real, you know, you ain't signed no contract or you ain't pulling in no, you know, thousand dollars every other day or whatever from doing what you do. You just, you're just doing what you do because you love it. And then, like you said, the community and the hood is recognizing who you are. And you, you, but you start dealing with stuff that celebrities deal with, like stalkers, <laughs> people that, you know, come alongside you just to kind of try to steal moves and steal your energy. And we were experiencing some of that right, right around 1990. And me, man, I can't speak for nobody else, but because I was so young, it was kind of scary. You know what I'm saying? I never really expressed that to anybody. And I would probably look like the last person that was scared because of what I was just talking about. I performed with so much fire. But inside, man, just realizing that I was really just a kid, you know, expressing what the talents God gave me. To answer your question, I saw Stardom. I saw us back then, you know, Star Search was the thing. And different, you know, uh, venues where they try to highlight talent or whatever around the country. It wasn't like how it is now. We got all these dance shows so you can dance and America's Best Dance Group and all that. Man, if we would have had that back in the day, our lives definitely would have been different. But we were kind of trailblazing some things, you know, not just obsession with the whole E culture. It was kind of under wraps, you know. Um, but I saw stardom, and I really kind of think I shied away from it a little bit. And, and um, I was really good at track, and I knew I had an Olympic chance. So I kind of backed away and trying to start going that route with it, with running track. Because right around 1991, which was really our pinnacle, it was nothing really left to do. The Yee Culture. We had one all the talent show. We had back then we really knew we knew Silk. You know, we used to love shows with them and hang out with them and stuff like that. Before they was really, really uh, famous, um, when they got with Keith Sweat and all of that. And so and you know, Key, uh, Silk was really good. I mean them boys can sing a cappella. Um even back then didn't need no music, you know, they were excellent. Man, we were beating and using the talent show structure you have, a best dance group best singing group, best whatever, and then best overall. We was at the point where we were getting best dance group and best overall. We were beating groups like Silk, who were excellent, you know, just from dancing. So, um, I saw stardom. I didn't know how it was gonna come, and then we started getting snaky stuff happening to us. People trying to manage us, and people stealing some of our videotape. We were going on auditions, trying to get in videos and stuff like that. People stealing our stuff, you know, we were just kind of naive to the business side of it, I know I was. And Drock and Durkee were kind of trying to transition into the business side, but me, I was really like in love with the love. I was in love with Obsession of Brotherhood and really didn't want to get tainted with the, with the business, you know. What's up? What's up? Yeah. No, I said, you know, just just thinking back of us just now, reminiscing uh, how what made us good at what we're doing is not just because just us, it's because we emulated each other. Yeah. Say what you just said. Yeah. Well, <laughs> we didn't remember. Right. Well, whoever made up the move, made up the move. We did it like that person. We did it like that, that person. person. We took on the same persona, just like True. that person. Yeah. A little synergy. Yeah. If Dirk did a move, yeah. we did it like G. Yeah. If Rock did a move, we did it like Rock. Yeah. If Ron did a move, we did it like Ron. Yeah. 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 So on and so on. That's how we did it. Yeah. Yeah. Brother. Okay, everybody creep down like Ron. Sometimes I, when I think about it, I regret it because I think Obsession could have really went somewhere else. But at the same time, I don't regret it too much because I know I wasn't ready. 
I wasn't ready for that level of stardom as a 17 year old kid. You know, I was still working through issues, and, and, and then you know, somebody throw contracts at you, and just really got to deal with the with the with the doggy dog nature of of choreography and video shoots and, and, and people um, trying to make a name for themselves to and see that's another reason why you know this whole push for these documentaries about the heat culture one thing that everybody in this culture wants to expose is the fact that ATL didn't get their due for the type of moves and the type of energy we created you know we were seeing our stuff in Michael Jackson Remember the Time video. We were seeing Heart and Soul, Bobby Brown trying to do our, our our dance moves. We were seeing people trying. And even fast forward to now, people still trying to do our stuff and not really doing it because they got to learn from the original. Bottom line, we had to come where the phone was at. Bottom line, this thing changed the world. It still changed the world. That's why we're doing documentaries. That's why the culture is resurging because we're just trying to tell the world our story, that we change the world, we're changing the world. Some of that stuff y'all doing, you do, you, you doing our moves, whether you know it or not. But, I mean, I'm, I'm, that ain't, I'm happy you're doing it. Yeah, I'm happy yeah. you're doing it. I mean, even when I saw Usher do it. Just do it up on us, like, even. Yeah, just do it up on us, what you doing? It's going to be a long day. Yo, you know, sad, sad. And I'm going to say this right here. I'm going to say this right here. It, it was a lot of joy on TG. I used to get mad at G money yeah. and, and, and what, what, pumpkin, I guess. <laughs> and when they when when they was like, yeah, oh. you know, so and so, she wanna um, oh, film us. I got that on. She I wanna film us so she too. can run out here and, and show Usher too. and all this kind of stuff. And I'm like, oh, I'm like, G don't don't show them my old movies. Well, you did it. <laughs> <laughs> and they done it. And this thing, you know, I'm looking at Yale, and I'm seeing Usher doing all our stuff on. I'm like, yeah, all of it. You know what I mean? On the knees, yeah. everything. I'm like, You know what I mean? Because the whole it, he he rapped he rapped Atlanta. He didn't say it was something different. He said it was. Mm, yeah. But ATL he said they didn't know where it came from. He didn't know where it no. came from, but he just knew it was Atlanta. Uh, and, 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 so. and, and, yeah. 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 But he respected it enough to say ATL. Yeah. Yeah. He saw it in the phone shop. Yeah. 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 Oh, he that way he saw, saw it. Saw in the phone shop yeah. with the vine. He saw it in there coming in there. Believe yeah, that way at 16 son. years old. All the way to yeah. Sierra when he had them two twin girls dancing yeah. with him. Yep. Sierra we and Sierra. We see her. We see her. Yeah. She did her thing. We she got paid off it before. Going but, out. But it was just an honor to, to get it out there and yeah. just see it. You know, and that's, that's the thing. After 91, 91, we just kind of, man, went through torching everywhere we went. We were just blazing up the stage. By that time, we had hit our stride where we, we could freak every move and we were just playing with it. You know, it was, 91 was ridiculous. Um, I'm, you know, I'm hoping we can find some footage from, from that year. We got a lot of 88, 89, 90 footage, but 91 was really, and 91 was really when I stopped. You know, that's when I went to college. I graduated in 1991, and the 92 man uh, went to Alabama A&M. Um, uh, me and DJ Smurf, uh, who missed the college park, as you know. And, all the way down, the drama player straight out the A town. DJ Smurf, gotta run it like that. See if you down with it, girl, where you at? Um, so I went up there with them at Alabama and then going to college, and my life kind of took a different route for a while. This is me, everybody know me, drop with me. Columbia, what? 91? With the blue, with the chiffon shirt, yeah, 91. Him and his girlfriend with beef. <laughs> Drop in one to dance. Drop shows up to the talent show <laughs> while we on stage. In my $400 Ralph Lauren jacket. <laughs> we on the stage, get ready to perform. Drop walks up like, I ain't perform. <laughs> in street clothes. I said, I'm going to kill him. <laughs> I'm going to kill him. And ain't home. nothing Durkie going to be able to do about it. I'm just going to kill him. <laughs> <laughs> he said, I'm going to tell him. <laughs> we went out. We went out and danced on stage. And we was all lit up. We was, so we was still killing them, but we was this way, that way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but everybody was happy to see us, you know, perform. That show, you know. We had our moments when we yeah. took it for granted, our success mm -hmm. for granted, and but we also snapped back. And then we knew how to step aside yeah. and focus on our personal life. Yeah. 
to, 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 to be where we are today. Absolutely. That's so that's what, what I right. that's what I like about obsession. Oh yeah. It helped me a lot. The school, Thomas, when I was yeah. just like triple going through stuff with my mom yeah. and all that kind of stuff, Thomas like, man, listen man, you gotta finish school. <laughs> you gotta go to school, you gotta do it, D. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, you right. <laughs> so y'all were really like my brother's keeper. Yeah, yeah. Man, yeah. Exactly. That's how this yeet culture has saved a lot of us, not just me. Um, and respect that the culture saved us, that the culture represented some deep stuff for us. Everybody might have been dancing for different reasons. Some people might have been dancing just for girls to scream, to get phone numbers. Um, some people might have been dancing to show off uh, because they didn't get validation at home. Some people might have been dancing because they just love to dance, you know. Everybody has their different reasons and motivations, but this is really a culture. These moves really came off the street. People really made these moves up. Dudes selling drugs on the corner, making moves up. You know, people developing friendships, coming into this culture, making moves, you know. I remember saying a high bit, get up, get friends with that shit. Yeah. <laughs> That's old, that's old. about the dance moves, it was just about the whole execution. The, the, they yeah, swag. The execution, but the they had they did, swag. Yeah. It was all about their swag, how they Because everybody in. could do the move, but yeah. it's just the way they did. The way they did. They did it so hard, clap so hard. Everybody yeah. was just hard. You know what I mean? It was hard. And hey Gert, what, what about that you used to show us on the floor? That battle ring? Like that. Oh, okay. really? Did a lot uh, for, for the yeet culture and whatnot. Funkatish. And the cool thing about what was going on with the yeet nation, um, we everybody had something to add to it. So each year it elevated, it got bigger and bigger. Moves were different. A lot of uh, we we had a lot of the same moves, but again, it was always a group or two or three groups that came up with a lot of uh, different types of moves and everything. And I, I would like to say Obsession, we took it to the next level. Then you had, after that, then you had 14K, took it to, to, took it to another level too also. So, um, you know, it, those guys influenced us a lot. So I, I would say I give them a lot of the, of the credit uh, as far as just, what, for me, just wanting to to be like those guys, you know what I'm saying? Just not just a dance move, but just the how they bring that swag into it. You know, they just the way they dress, the way they act. They acting real professional. They was on another whole nother planet when, when I first saw those guys. So you know, that's how I wanted um, obsession to be. You know, when we walk into a building, people recognize us. You know what I'm saying? And and just the swag that we was trying to bring. You know, because we wanted to act professional. You know, even though we was, you know, street, you know, whatnot, but but we had a professional uh, sense about ourselves 
and we got that. I will credit that to uh, FDC. It, it was it's truly organic. It is, I, I like to call this the South's breakdancing, you know, because breakdancing just kind of took everything by storm and went nation and international wide. People still breakdancing. Guess what? People still yeeting, whether they really even realize it or not. A lot of these choreographers and a lot of the videos and stuff, they don't even know they're doing our moves, you know, so it's still alive. Um, we talk about it from a nostalgic sense because we're older and we're grown men and women now. But the, the, the culture, the moves and all that, that stuff's still brand spanking new to this day. Um, uh, think about moves like the Devastator, which JJ made up. Um, I guess, you know, man, that move done been, I think done been chopped up and done different for years, man, because it's such a, it's, it's such a clean, um, you know, transition moves is such a clean, you know, thing you put together. You see, it comes from the skate culture. You know, JJ, Carlos, Renard, shout out to Guess, Ted, to Rion, Sleepy Brown, Pat, um, all of them, man, they was at Jelly Bean Skating Rink um, in like the mid 80s, late 80s, all the way through the 90s. And a lot of their type of moves, a lot of their style, a lot of their swag came off the skates. And so, a lot of the stuff you, you, you had to do on roller skating. Well, JJ, well, was, you know, from what I hear, Anthony Francis transferred, Anthony Francis, FBC, transferred the skate move on skates and put it on the floor with no roller skates on. But JJ really pioneered a lot of that swag from skates to the floor, you know, and the devastated is one of those moves that he kind of transferred from on skates to the floor where it's a staple now. Everybody does it. It's one way to do it. Carlos, who danced the guest, knows how to do it because him and JJ were just thick as thieves like me and Drew for the longest, so he knows the original Devastator. My nigga JJ, outlaw, whatever y'all want to call him, that's my nigga for life. Guess for life. But you know what? I done hooked up without sex for life, too. Let's <laughs> get it. Oh, oh, this is Devastator. Let's get it, Sam. JJ. JJ. You know, you know, that was a too. Oh, let's Come on. Come on. Yes. Boom. 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 I've seen APR do a version of the Devastator, whether they call the APR version or not. I've seen them do it. I've seen all too crucial. Everybody, you know, they might not have known what they was doing, but they were mimicking JJ. But when he came home, <laughs> and we made our own, we were like, see, come on, come That type of stuff is beautiful to me because it's like if you don't know what you're doing, you, you carry on the legacy. And to know that a lot of these moves, like Anthony Francis said he made up transforming in his bathroom, just messing with his face, wanting to do something like the Transformers, like the cartoon, way before there was a movie about it. He just kind of moved his face to the side and boom, transforming is his birth. You know, the skate coming off the skate, that signature beat move is birth. Devastated with JJ, a signature move is birth, and 10, 20, 30, 40 years later, people still doing it. I'm teaching my son. They don't even know what they're learning. You know what I mean? But they're learning historic stuff. You know, that's beautiful to me that I was a, I could say, you know, I, I'm not crazy legs from New York City Breakers. I'm not those guys who saw breakdancing and was a part of that genesis of it. The cardboard, you know, I breakdance and all that. I still do it now, but I wasn't a part of that. Bronx crew, that New York crew that had the cardboard on the street and made the stuff up, you know what I mean? But I am a part of the elite culture who made stuff up. I made my own stuff up. I see people doing obsessions movies, own videos, you know what I'm saying? It's amazing. I've been telling people all my life, wow, we made that up in Dirty Basement. And people look at me like, oh, really? Whatever. You can make no move up. But, I mean, whether you believe me or not, you know, I, I know I'm like, wow, we really were a part of history and still are, you know what I'm saying?